we have had this week at our leaders' meeting some beautiful, wonderful um, answers to some of these questions. And so I'm going to invite um, the leaders up and go ahead and come on up and we'll go one by one. Let us pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. You are a holy, glorious God. We love you so much. Thank you for revealing yourself to us and revealing the Father to us through this word that we're studying. Open our ears today to hear, to listen. Move into our ears and to our very souls that we might know the power of your presence and your love for us individually, Lord. You love each one of us uniquely. You know us through and through. Guide us now and enable us to open our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, so I'm sharing how I came to believe in Jesus and entered into a personal relationship with him on day two. I don't remember when I first started believing in Jesus. He was just always there. I do remember in eighth grade when I wasn't sure about God, or at least I wasn't sure if I was ready to be confirmed. Luckily, it didn't last for long, and my faith returned. My faith has deepened as I've had more time to devote to studying God's Word and discussing it with others. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit has stirred up gifts I never expected to experience, which has brought me closer to the Lord and frankly made those Bible miracle stories a lot more real. So when I think about my personal relationship with Jesus, I don't think of any single aha moment. It's been more like hiking the Appalachian Trail with a lot of rest stops along the way for refueling and admiring scenic vistas. And sometimes I stumble and trip and sometimes the path is super smooth, but the path is always, always there. Uh, having grown up a cradle Catholic, uh, I had actively participated in my faith since childhood. When my children were still young, my husband, who had always gone to church with me, although he was raised Presbyterian, decided that he wanted to become Catholic. As his sponsor at RCIA, I learned my faith all over again and now understood the teachings of the church, the mass, and the sacraments. My personal relationship with Jesus, however, really started with this Bible study. I wanted to understand the Word of God. I wanted to know Jesus on a deeper level. I knew that Jesus loved me and that he died for me. But I didn't know that Jesus wanted to have a personal relationship with me right now and forever. I didn't realize that the Father first called me to Jesus. I didn't understand the power of the Holy Spirit, except that I received it at baptism. I knew I was supposed to love others and help others, but I didn't know that I was called to be his disciple, that I was supposed to evangelize and proclaim liberty to the captives and to heal the sick in his name. Through this study, Jesus came into my heart and has transformed my heart of stone into a heart of flesh. He cleansed me with his love. Um, he opened my eyes, my ears, and my heart to know him and to love him. He is the treasure of my heart and has so faithfully revealed the love of the Father to me. I have gone from self-centered to Christ-centered, from anxious about many things to peaceful, joyful, and trusting in the Lord, from prideful to humble. The change in me is evident to my family and serves as a witness um, to the power of the Word of God and to the power of the Holy Spirit to the power of Jesus, my Lord and my God. When we were little, we were always late for church. Always frantic in the mornings trying to get to church on time. One day, we were early for Mass. And I remember seeing all the people kneeling and praying before Mass. And I turned to my mom and I asked her, what prayer do we say when we're early? The Our Father? The Hail Mary? Which one do we say? And she whispered in my ear, you just talk to God. And I remember when she told me that, 
what a great feeling it was because it was like God was my friend and I remember turning back and looking up at the cross and saying, hi God, how are you doing today? <laughs> God is a person, he is my friend, and so began my personal relationship with him. It was such a good feeling to know I had this friend to talk to, almost like a verbal diary that you can spill out your private thoughts and fears. Every time I prayed, I asked him how he was, and when I finished praying, I asked him to help me to be a good person. Please help me be a good person, Lord. Please help me be a good person, Lord. Please help me be a good person, Lord. I always said it three times. <laughs> My name is Kathy. <clears throat> I've always believed in Jesus. I always believed that he was the son of God. I was a cradle Catholic. And I went to Mass every Sunday. But in 1975, a fellow teacher asked me if I had a personal relationship with Jesus. And had I been washed in the blood of Jesus, I responded to her, I go to church every Sunday. <laughs> and I think what you said was just disgusting. <laughs> During this time, my husband Bob and I were discussing how we wanted more from going to church. We would leave feeling very unfulfilled. At that time, he was doing the plumbing on the Assembly of God Church and shared how the people there seemed to have something that we didn't have. He said, they're all so happy. <laughs> we certainly weren't going to become a, one of those holy rollers, though, or Jesus freaks, as we called them. Well, in January of 1976, we had a priest come to St. Peter's, and he was there for two weeks, and he gave a mission. And I went to the early mass because Bob stayed home with the baby. And when the priest whose name was Father Richard Otto, spoke, I knew that he had what Bob and I had been talking about. So I went home and I said, we have a priest at church, and he's got what I want, and I want a piece of it. Mm -hmm. And so we were there every single night for the two weeks sitting in the front row. His preaching made Jesus come alive to me. I asked Jesus to become the Lord and Savior of my life, and I went forward with shaking knees, literally, my knees were shaking to be prayed over for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So fast forward 42 years. I'm still on my journey, and my older son calls me a Jesus freak. <laughs> and I am in the God Squad, he calls it. Because when he wants prayer, he calls the God Squad. So I now I am very grateful that I am a holy roller. <laughs> I meant on for day two. Your revelation. My revelation for day two. On day two. Okay. Be aware of my promptings. You are my disciple. You have no idea how many people you touch for me by being you. The you that I created. The you that seeks after my heart. The you that doesn't know how precious she is to me. I'm sharing A on day three. The greater need for forgiveness often deepens our love for our Savior who died on the cross for us for the forgiveness of our sins. In what ways can you relate to the woman in this episode? It's very humbling to be forgiven. I remember when I went through my divorce, I felt like such a failure. I never thought that word divorce would apply to me, especially not as a 27-year-old. I remember my mother telling me I needed to forgive myself for not being perfect. And I knew that I was to blame too for the marriage failing. It wasn't all one-sided. I was terrified to ask for an annulment, but I finally worked up enough courage to go talk to the priest. I didn't go right away. I waited until I was remarried with three children. So I was really scared. 
And he said the sweetest thing ever. <coughs> I want you to think of this as a healing process. And it was. That's not to say that it was easy or that it wasn't painful. No, I'd say it was just like being the woman at Jesus' feet, crying as all the bad memories came forth, all the mistakes that were made. I too could have washed his feet with my tears and dried them with my hair. But it was a healing process, and the forgiveness that came out of it was like an ointment for my soul. And it brought me back fully into the church. So I'm pretty sure Jesus likes that. Um, I'm sharing my meditation for day three. I thank you, Jesus, for leading me along the path of righteousness with you. And then he led me back right to our Psalm 55:22. Unload your burden unto the Lord, and he will lift you up.